All right. So in the last couple of videos, we talked about Rolle's theorem. We explained that Rolle's theorem is, in some sense, a special case of the mean value theorem, um, right? Because if, uh, if f of a equals f of b, then this average rate of change is simply 0, right? And so then f prime of c should be equal to 0. Uh, now, um, it happens that although Rolle's theorem is a special case of the mean value theorem, it can also be used to establish the more general case that we have from the mean value theorem, right? And the nice thing about Rolle's theorem is it's easy to see that it's true. Um, the mean value theorem is a little bit harder, but it's important enough that it does deserve a proof. So here's the strategy, right? We want to, we're going to assume, so remember the statement of the mean value theorem assumes that f is continuous on some closed interval, it's differentiable on the corresponding open interval, and we want to show that there has to exist this number c such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That's what we're trying to get to, right? We want to show that there's, there's at least one point on the graph, right? So, so the blue graph here is y equals f of x. We want to show there's at least one point on the graph where the tangent line is parallel to this line segment that goes from sort of the beginning of the graph to the end of the graph, right? The slope of this line segment is here, gives the average rate of change. Now, of course, because this is a line segment, right, it's a portion of a line, and we know how to get the equation of a line, all right? What's the equation of that line? Well, we know the slope, we know a point, right? So we know that point slope formula says that if we do y minus f of a, right, or y equals f of a, right, so f of a plus the slope, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, okay, times x minus a. We know that that's, that's the equation of the line, right, using point-slope formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is of course a function, we're going to give it a name. L of x, it's a linear function, right? And it looks complicated because of all the f of a's, f of b's in here, but remember that a and b are just numbers, f of a is a number, f of b is a number. So this is the number, this is the number, it's just slope, right? So this really is just number plus m times x minus a, right? It's, it's, it's the equation of a line, right? It looks complicated, but it's just the equation of a line, okay? So what we're going to do is, is we're going to assume that our function f is continuous on the interval from a to b and differentiable on the corresponding open interval, okay? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to let g of x be the difference between f of x and l of x. So what happens when you, when you subtract this line, what kind of happens is this picture gets sort of turned until until this line is horizontal. We're kind of subtracting it down, right? Um, so what we're really doing here is we're sort of turning the picture so that the mean value theorem ends up looking a lot like Rolle's theorem, okay? That's what happens when we, when we do this. Um, and, and so what we're going to do is we're going to note the following. G is also continuous on a, b. Why? It's the difference of two continuous functions, right? This is a linear function. It's certainly continuous. <coughs> g is also differentiable on the open interval. Use the difference rule, right? In fact, we can compute L prime of x, right? L prime, derivative of a constant is just 0, derivative of a constant is 0, derivative of x is just 1. We just get the slope, right? We know the derivative of a linear function is just the slope. f of b minus f of a over b minus a, right? 
difference rule tells me that g prime is simply f prime minus l prime. Right? So we know that g is differentiable. Also, what's g of a? Right? So g of a is the difference between f of x and l of x at a, but they have the same value there, right? And they have the same value at b. So g of a, g of b, they're going to be 0. And of course, you can, you can see that. You can do explicit computation to confirm that. Um, if you plug x equals a into here, a minus a becomes 0. So g of a is just, or l of a rather, is just f of a, right? So g of a will be f of a minus f of a is 0. If you plug in x equals b, b minus a cancels with this b minus a. And then you have f of a plus f of b minus f of a leaves you with f of b. So g of b will be f of b minus f of b. It's 0. OK. Well, what do these three points tell us? They tell us that Rolle's theorem applies. Right? Therefore, um, there is some c between a, b such that g prime of c equals 0. But what is g prime of c? Well, g prime of c will be f prime of c minus l prime of c. And l prime, well, l prime is the same value everywhere, right? It's just the slope, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. All right. So that difference is 0. Move that to the other side, and you have the result for the mean value theorem. Okay? Um, so that's why the mean value theorem is true. We can actually go through a detailed proof. We can see that it works. Um, now that we know it works, we're going to put it to use.